Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. So Viego is in a similar spot to how Hecarim is and was when I made the video. I'm going to make an update on the Hecarim video. There's some new changes to crit items which means that different items are now better on Hecarim and worse on Hecarim and whatever it may, might be. Along with all the bruiser changes there's probably going to need to be a reshuffling of um, what I would say is good or bad on Hecarim now. But I'll make the video later. This video is about Viego. So Viego is an extremely hard to build champion because he's very awkward. Viego is AD, AP and his ability scale was crit sometimes, okay? And he has a weird double hit passive after his Q so that means that on hits good on him and he gets attack speed from being in his shroud which means attack speed's pretty good on him and he can turn into other people so it kind of means that building doesn't really matter as much on him because a fair amount of the time you're building someone else's build so I don't know maybe you'd like private message the enemy to tell tell them what to build so that when you kill them and take them over you like now to build it better than them anyway there's a lot of nuance a lot of mind games which you can play with Viego okay but when it comes down to his core build he's fairly hard to build okay so I think that I found out the best build for him in almost every scenario. The build gives you everything which you need and more. So I'll go over that build now, then we'll talk over the alternatives and blah, 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 okay? How we normally do it. So the build is, so this is in order which I would say to build them. Triforce first, Phantom Dancer second, then Gut, then Sterax or Navoi Quick Blade, depending on whether you want more survivability or more damage. Then go Gargoyle Stoneplate after you build those two, and then last Titanic Hydra, or you could build Titanic Hydra before um, Stoneplate, depending on whether you want more damage or more HP or more um, defensive stats. Similarly to how you would um, decide whether to build Sterax or Navori. So I'll go into why I build each one of these items and why I think they're all good, okay? So Triforce is the best single damage item in the game when it comes to AD damage, especially when you take into account the fact that Viego is a champion with a low cooldown Q, which means he is able to get the maximum value of the Sheen passive. You could also go Divine here, but I think that the Triforce is generally better, unless the team has maybe like three or more tanks or so, then I would say go Divine. Divine is probably better. So let's start by reviewing the base stats. So in terms of offensive stats, Trinity Force can give you 35 AD with 30% attack speed, while Divine Sunder gives you 40 AD. So in a one auto attack comparison, Divine Sunder will do more damage due to the higher AD that Sunder gives you. However, due to the additional attack speed on Trinity Force, there will be a point where Trinity Force will give more overall damage. Think of it as a slope equation. Divine Sunder has an equation of damage is equal to 40x, where x is the number of auto attacks, and Trinity Force has an equation of damage is equal to 35 x where again x is the number of auto attacks however since trinity force gives that additional attack speed the x value of trinity force will increase there will be a point where since x is higher in trinity force that it will overtake the damage of divine sunder however this is just purely based on base stats now let's consider the spellblade passives so to test the damages we will be using a level 10 camille and a level 10 nar to get both a melee and ranged case respectively so let's set up equations that i will use to test the values here you can see the two equations i'll be using. In the top equation, you'll see the damage equation for the Spellblade passive on Trinity Force. And on the bottom, you'll see the Spellblade damage equation for Divine Sunder. So in order for Divine Sunder to do more damage on Trinity Force with only regards to the Spellblade passive, then the enemy must have at least 1188.63 max HP for Divine Sunder to do more damage using only base AD and the Spellblade passive. Also remember that I'm not considering the Mythic passives in this part of the comparison. Now looking at the example for Nar, the max HP of the enemy must be at least 2005.5 HP for Divine Sunder to do more damage than Trinity Force using only base stats and the Spellblade passive. Now let's apply the Armor Pen from the Mythic passive using only one legendary item. If we were to use a level 10 Camille damaging a target who has 100 armor, then the max HP of the enemy must be at least 1141.08 HP. If we were to use a target who has 200 armor, the enemy must have at least 1125.23 HP. And this makes sense because the Armor Pen is getting more value as the armor of the target is increasing, thereby lowering the max HP threshold needed for Divine 
Sunderer to do more damage in the Spellblade passive. Let's now use the level 10 Nar. When the target has 100 armor, the max HP of the enemy must be at least 1925.28 HP for Divine Sunderer to do more damage than 20 force using the Spellblade passive. When the target has 200 armor, the max HP of the enemy must be at least 1898.54 HP for Divine Sunderer to do more damage than 20 force in terms of the Spellblade passive. Now let's do an extended auto attack comparison using a level 10 Camille where we consider multiple auto attacks. I won't perform the Narn calculations due to the fact that I'm not applying the max HP values here. This is due to the fact that I'm not considering the Spellblade passive here. Let's create equations to represent the damage from both of these items. The top equation represents the equation for Trinity Force which considers the threefold strike passive. The bottom equation will represent the damage from this Divine Sunderer. I will also later apply the Mythic passives to the equations. The legendary item that I'll be using will be Frozen Heart which will not contribute to the auto attack damage. So if we were to test these damage values on a no armor target, Trinity Force will do more damage. We would get that Trinity Force produces 837.59 damage and Divine Sunderer produces 810.54 damage. But now let's consider the Mythic passives in the damage comparison. We will consider the 3% armor pen from Divine Sunder and the extra damage from Trinity Force. We will consider the 3% armor pen from the Divine Sunder Mythic Passive and the extra damage from the Trinity Force Mythic Passive. When I test different armor values, Trinity Force usually does more damage. I tested up to the armor value of 2000 armor and Trinity Force still did more damage. If I added a second legendary item that doesn't affect the auto attack damage, I would still get that Trinity Force was favored in terms of the damage. So what can we learn from the values that we obtained? From a damage standpoint, it seems that Trinity Force is usually better than Divine Thunder. We can see that when we did an auto attack comparison with a threefold strike passive from Trinity Force and that there were certain thresholds where the spell blade from Trinity Force did more damage than Divine Thunder. However, damage is not the sole thing that separates these two items. Divine Thunder also has the heal on the item. This can allow the user to, of the item to be able to survive a bit longer. The one thing with Divine Thunder is that it is good to battle against tankier champions because of the max HP damage on the item as well as the armor and magic pen. However, with the latest changes, that part of the item got nerfed. The ability to battle tanks on Divine Sender was nerfed, that in many cases now Trinity Force might be favored. However, there are still some cases where Divine Sender can still be good. If you want to test the values and champions that you want to play, you can use the equations that I provide in this video to help you determine where each item is better. Triforce also has a good stacking mechanic if you go Conqueror or if you go um lethal tempo depending on which one you go they both stack which means they both work well with triforce right so you go phantom dancer here for a different reasons that you for a different reason that you go phantom dance on hecarim so on hecarim you go phantom dancer because of the move speed bonus however on viego you go phantom dancer because of the attack speed bonus and because of the crit chance for those of you who don't know viego's q and viego's r are able to scale with crit chance and crit damage it's not just that, but it's also that Viego's Q scales with attack speed, all right? So the more attack speed you have, the quicker you're able to stab out your Q. And the quicker you're able to stab out your Q, the more your Q turns into an auto attack reset, which comes into play later on in the in the explanation here. So you go Sterax here mainly because whenever you build Triforce, you always really want to build Sterax because of how it interacts with um, Triforce, right? So Triforce increases your base AD and Sterax works off how much base AD you have, meaning you get double scaling from both the items. Not to, not to mention that Sterax is a rare item, no one really goes Sterax anymore, which means that if you're in a 1v1 or like a just fighting someone, then you're going to maybe surprise them because no one really expects a Viego to get a big shield from a Sterax or a Gargoyles or anything like that. So Gargoyles Stoneplate had some nice synergy when it comes to Sterax and it also has a nice build path as I said in my previous video on Hecarim so I was just going to play a bit of my old video here because it's the same reasoning. Gargoyle Stone plays fall now favor with a lot of people mainly because of its low gold efficiency. It's a, it's a fairly low gold efficiency item. It's only about um, I think 80? 80 something percent gold efficiency which is awful. It's terrible. I, I won't lie to you. It's a bad gold efficiency. However, when it's fully stacked, the item gives you 25% increased resistances, meaning the item itself becomes powerful the later on in the game you go, turning your, this is at level 18, it turns your effective HP with, with this build from 7,471 to 8,247 in a 5v5 fight or in a 1v1 or in a 1v5 fight if you're, if you're ahead enough. All right. I think that this is worth it mainly because of how good an item um, Aegis of the Legion is. Aegis of Legion. I think this item is busted for a single purchase, especially on the jungler. You're not against anybody directly in lane. 
and if you think you're too squishy you can just buy this item and then just wait you can just sit on it which i do i've done a few times it's come to the point where i'm extremely squishy but i'm getting mixed damage so i'm not just gonna how can i say i think it's best for me just to build an Aegis of legion a lot of the times in this uh in these circumstances also if i'm getting heavy single target damage a single type target damage i guess you could say like heavy physical damage i will just buy two cloth armors because that you can you can build two cloth armors into uh, um gargles or you could get two um nullifying uh what do you call them the magic resist cloaks i forget the name of them you go two of them and then you could also build that into a gargles i think it has a really really nice build path generally the items themselves aren't too expensive and can be built pretty much any time throughout the game So Navori Quick Blades, this is where the build gets fun and interesting. So Navori Quick, Blade, Navori Quick Blades has become an OP item. However, it does not at all only have to be used on ADCs. It can also be used on melee champions. This is because of how the change that they did to the passive now gives it two passives and both of those passives are extremely good on fighters. So I'll read those out now. So if you have at least 60% critical strike chance, basic attacks on hit reduce your basic abilities current cooldowns by 15% of their remaining cooldown, and your ability damage and proc damage dealt by abilities increases between 0 to 20% based on crit, crit chance. So pretty much increases your abilities damage and decreases your abilities cooldown. So the reason why this is so good is because Riot recently said that they will be reducing the crit chance needed from 60 to 40% to activate the first passive, meaning that all you would need is 40% crit chance and or two crit items in order to get maximal value from the first passive. The first passive is especially good on Viego, however, because Viego has the ability to auto attack twice after hitting someone, after hitting someone with his Q meaning that he is able to proc the passive twice in quick succession. Not only that, but also when you fully stack up Phantom Dancer, it effectively turns your Q into an auto attack reset, meaning you're able to quickly get off three auto attacks and one Q. Not only that, but most ADCs are gonna build a lot of crit chance and they're going to go beyond what is needed for this item to be effective. All you need is two crit items but ADCs are going to build a lot of crit items, meaning that the first passive becomes less and less useful on them. However, on champions like Viego, the passive will be maximally useful because you're only building two crit items, right? But that's only the first um, passive, as I said, so let's go on to the second passive. So the second passive of the ability gives you an 8% increase in damage on all of your abilities. 8% increased damage might not seem like a lot, but you have to take into account and remember that Viego is an AP champion, and most people forget this. All of his abilities, apart from his R, scales with AP. However, you don't normally build AP on Viego, so that 8% increase in damage gives you both AP and AD, even in just small amounts. It's still going to be an increase in your, in your AP, which you normally won't get. Not to mention that, as I said before, Viego's Q scales with crit. So you're getting the crit increase from both Navori and from Phantom Dancer, and you are getting the two passives from Navori along with the passives from Phantom Dancer. So amazing synergy, especially on Viego. The last item that I will go into here is Titanic Hydra. So I mainly got Titanic Hydra because of the fact that Viego's double auto attack after Q applies on hit effects at 100 uh, at 100 uh, at 100 percent effectiveness along with the fact that this is a fairly high hp build especially taking into account the fact that we are running crit however it's still too soon to say whether ravenous will be good on him so until that happens i'm gonna suspend um suspend belief about the idea i'm gonna say that Titanic is the best now if it comes to light that Ravenous is better then switch over to Ravenous right so I'll probably make a video or like a little YouTube community post about that so the next obvious question here obvious question which everyone's probably wondering is why no blade of the ruined king Viego is the ruined king so why don't we go his blade everyone always talks about how blade of the ruined king is so good on Viego Tyler one talks about it so 
Is the Blade of the Ruin King not good on Viego now? And I would say it's good, but there are better options out there. So I did a quick comparison here between Triforce, Blade, Kraken, and Spirit, and um, Essence Reaver. So Triforce did 6,500 6, damage in total, and with just a Q auto attack, auto attack, it was able to do 541 damage. So Blade of the Ruin King did 6,000 damage in the full 15 seconds, and with a Q auto attack, auto attack, it did 665 damage. So Kraken Slayer did 6,500 6, damage in total, and with a Q auto attack, auto attack, it did 472 damage. Essence Reaver within the 15 seconds did 5,600 damage, and with a Q auto attack, auto attack, it was able to do 511 damage. You could argue that in short bursty trades that Blade of the Ruin King is better, but I would say that if you're going to do fast bursty trades and why are you going Conqueror, why not just go Electrocute, right? Viego is a Conqueror based champion because he stacks it so quickly. Why are we playing a long drawn out fight rune if we want to do quick bursty fights which would require Electrocute? It doesn't really make sense to me. I would say that generally you almost always want to go conqueror and because of that you'll you almost always want to go triforce okay so that's my my reasoning you could say that you could swap out something else for triforce but for cog for um blade sorry but that kind of defeats the purpose everything in the build synergizes with something else in the build if you take out one aspect you're going to take out another aspect as well and triforce just doesn't have that same sticking power along with it right if you take out phantom dancer you remove crit if you take out quick um Navoi quick blaze then you're going to remove all of the passives if you take out triforce then you're not going to have a mythic item you're going to move move speed and you're going to remove the um scaling with sterax right the only thing which i could think of would be taking out the item Titanic Hydra and putting in Blade of the Ruin King. But even then, I'll I'll do some tests and then I'll I'll show you which one's better right now. It does about the same damage give or take. So since Titanic gives you so much more HP, I'd say generally it isn't worth it. But you know, it's at your own discretion generally. If you want more healing, then you can go it. If you want more move speed, then you can go it. You know, there's different circumstances in which you would go it, right? But yeah so let's compare this build to some other builds which i've which are more popular so i would say that the the build radiant virtue phantom dancer sterax gauge gargle stone plate and titanic hydra is just a bit worse than my regular build it gives you 11,961 hp when not transcended and 17,571 hp when transcended so yeah it gives you an insane amount of HP. It gives you almost double the HP, which you would be, or the effective HP, sorry, which you would be getting from the main build, which I spoke about. So, I think there's some fair merit to give in order to say why this item, why this build is so good. When it comes to damage, it does about 12,000 damage in that 15 seconds. So, when it comes to my main build, Triforce, Phantom Dancer, Sterax, Gurgle, Stoneplate, um, Titanic Hydra, and uh, Navoi Quickblade. The old build has an Avoy in there as well, I just didn't mention it. So this Triforce build does 16,700 damage in the 15 seconds which I tested it for, and it has 9,569 effective HP. So the main build which people go, which is Blade of the Ruin King, Divine Sunderer, Death Dance, Witsend, GA and more, does 14,500 damage in the 15 seconds and gives you 700 and sorry 7407 hp but i would debate these stats because i don't really know how to factor in death dance um passive 
because it gives you DR but not really because you take the damage unless you kill them and the damage is true damage which means it actually increases the damage and then when it comes to more the more shield is only against magic damage so do I count that the same as a shield do I decrease it by some percentage it's hard to factor in effective HP when it comes to these sorts of shields and weird damage nullifying effects okay but yeah I would say that the Triforce build is definitely the best overall and then the Radiant Virtue build will be the second best when it comes to you wanting to be more tanky and maybe want to be a frontline. And then you should never really go the Blade Divine Sundra build. You can go Divine Sundra with the normal Triforce build, just swapping out the Triforce for Divine. But even that would be like a fairly rare situation. So those are my thoughts on Viego. Yeah, thank you a lot for watching the video. I'm going to make another video next, either on Silas or on Red Cane. Someone asked me to do Silas, so I'm probably going to do Silas, but Red Cane is also in the works. So, thank you a lot for watching. And I'll see you in the next... Oh, comment down below which videos you want me to make, what champions you want me to make videos on. Yeah, so see you lot in the next one. Have a good one.